All right, welcome back. It's time to meet our special co-host today. She's going to help us out this, uh, this afternoon. So let's have a big welcome for Lady B. <laughs> How are you doing? Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start by telling everybody, uh, first of all, when you're on and what your shows are all about. So wh when are you on? I'm on Friday nights from 10 p.m. until 1 a.m., and that's the Friday night jam where I hit you with some funk and some body slam. All right. Well, what's your Saturday show about? Saturdays afternoons from 3 to 7, I'm known as the Queen of Rhapsody. I'm mixing on the turntables, and I'm rapping viciously. It's crazy to believe it's been 30 years. Seems like yesterday. We were writing rhymes and tagging T-shirts and going downtown for Dookie Dope earrings. And now look at us. We have children, grandchildren, 30 years, three decades. Wow. Lady B is Philly. I mean, bottom line. She's the queen of hip-hop in this town. Lady B was the first female on Wax. Uh, she's the first DJ to play hip-hop, and she's still the first. She's 30 years into the game. She's the first one to play my first production record called Action by Orange Crush. It seems like all my life Lady B's been on the radio. You know what I mean? Because I don't think I started living until hip-hop. <laughs> There was two things they would ask you when you when you send your record, a rap record, to a radio station. Is Lady B playing it or is Mr. Magic playing it? If we the one that's playing it, you have a shot to get on the radio. I don't think we will ever get that plateau moment back, ever. I don't think any of the new cats that's coming out or any of the new school children that's growing up right now will never understand the plateau listening to Street Beat with Lady B. Street Beat on a Sunday, taking you back to the glorious, the glorious old school. Ain't no party like an old school party, because an old school party don't stop. I knew what my life was going to be from the age seven, but she changed my life. Keep it real. Lady B is truly a blessing to the city of Philadelphia. As a woman in a market, that, that, the perception that hip hop is so sexist, but they all welcomed her so much. Well, the B depends on which what you give her is what part of the B you get back. Cause she is a lady by all means, believe that. But she can carry a big stick. <laughs> I'm just gonna like speak from my heart. If it comes in my head, I'm just gonna let it roll off my tongue. I can't believe it's been 30 years. Like I don't even know what to say to you, woman. Like you, I grew up on you. <laughs> we made our own mixtapes, you know, back in the day, how we used to make our own mixtapes. When Lady B show come on, you didn't have to press pause. It was just all music that you wanted to hear, including her voice. And I used to, I used to record her on my mom's eight track machine. Now that tells you, and as a matter of fact, hold up. Here's one of the joints right here that I used to record Lady B on. Lady B is hip hop's underappreciated Godmother. Not that she got the big head, because the fact that everybody wanted her, she just stayed the same with everybody. I don't care who you were. If you were the top man or if you were the bottom man, she treated you the same. She's a people person. She's not superficial. She never got too large for anybody. She never turned her nose up at anybody. And she always opened her door. Lady B is hot mama. Lady B is a passionate person. Anything she does, she's just really passionate about it. She's the 30th anniversary at the Dell. She said she wanted it there specifically for her community because she didn't want the tickets to be, you know, overpriced. She has the biggest heart, basically, that I've ever encountered because she really does do for anybody and everybody. She's such a fun person to be around and so happy with what she's doing and who she's doing it for. The radio and the DJing, it is all not a job to her. It is actually her passion and what she loves to do. She mixed and scratched the beat in the streets of Philly at a ripe young age for all to hear. A hip-hop poet in her own right waxing the turntables far and near. Lady B is Philly's treasure. Hip-hop means to me um, excitement, creativeness, pride, individuality, expression, realness. Oh, I definitely am real to a fault sometimes. If you could say anything about me, and I think if you wouldn't ask anybody about me, I think the first thing that would come out their mouth was the fact that I am real. 
The hip hop bug bit me in Kim Graves, 20th and Samson in Philadelphia. Lawrence Levine was a DJ in the club at that time. He's the first one who started to uh, catch that break beat as they did in the Bronx and give me the opportunity to just start talking trash over those break beats and look, I mean, that's when I caught it. I caught it in Kim Graves. I caught it in Kim Graves listening to World and Daryl Dawkins and, you know, other brothers I had met up in New York. You know, they called it toasting back then, toasting over the break beats. She started to, to listen to the things that we were doing as far as on the rap scene and uh, we was clap your hands, everybody, and all that kind of stuff. We were getting it on and she was just, up like a pupil just waiting and waiting for a turn, you know. We were up there playing with it, me and my fellas, we were playing with that, but she was taking that all in and it's like a sponge and you know, she took it to another level. I mean a serious another level. So, you know, it was a thing that she was uh, 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 very captive with what we were doing and she became it. GB on a Friday night as we salute Philadelphia rap artists. I know we're not going to get a chance to play them all in this set. But if you don't know who they are, Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince, Steady B, Vet Money, Ice Cream T, Schooly D, Cool C, 3D, Jewel T, The Tough Crew, MC Breeze, Too Fresh, Malika Love, Cash Money, and MC Marvelous, just to name a few. She was a holy grail. Coming from the B-Force days, we were rapping in the streets, you know, and it's like if, if, you, had a, if you had the ultimate goal, as an artist making music, it was to be on the radio. You didn't even think TV anything, it was radio. Just getting your hip hop music on the radio. And B was it, B was radio. I came down to Philly with Mr. Magic and we were the first ones to play rap in New York. B was the first one to play it in Philadelphia. Lady B is a pillar in that foundation. She always, you know, was there with us. You know, she was there from the beginning and she's still here now. And the 30 year celebration, you know, the honor uh, that I'm participating in it, the honor that we're all talking about her is, is, is a thrill for all of us because we love her so much. And, and just, you know, we all survived. We're still here, you know? That's a big deal that we're still here, <laughs> tell you that. I always believed that life was already written and I started to watch those pages unfold. The hip hop record, the radio gig, the career. I don't know how you actually put a big 3-0 on it to make it uh, so different or, you know, all this adoration and these awards and stuff. I'm tickled by it because I don't think I've done anything different in this 30-year mark uh, than I've done, you know, for the years prior. My name is Councilman Curtis Jones, Jr., 4th District, City of Philadelphia, proud resident of West Philly. Well, we're here today in City Council um, to recognize the history and legacy of Lady B and what she has meant to the hip-hop industry and culture and the paradigm that um, all of this is a part of Philly's rich music history. Uh, and we're recognizing her for 30 years and it doesn't look like it. I think somehow she lied on her birth certificate because she looked good. When you reach your 30th anniversary, you get awesome awards like this one from City Council. Who knew? I'm so blessed! She thinks of radio as a community service, which is not a stance that most people take. And thanks to working with her for the last four years, I understand that it, she's completely right. She doesn't just play songs that she wants to hear or even just that people want to hear. She you know, reaches people, a community that she's kind of built over the last 30 years every day. She knows her listeners, she knows her call she knows the city, like the back of her hand. 107.9, good afternoon. Hey, let's see what's going on, baby. What's going on, sugar? It's TC. You better know it. How you been, baby? You haven't been calling oh. me in a while. I feel a certain kind of way. Are you cheating on me? I have a radio family, just as I have my blood relatives, just as I have uh, the friends who have uh, been in my life so long that I consider them family. I have people who I've never seen face to face, but I know their voice. I probably couldn't pick them out of a lineup, but when they call in, I know their voice. I already know their lives their issues, their problems. Did you call to tell me you love me? Is that what you called for? Yes, I did. Oh. I ain't seen you in a minute. My birthday was in May. Well, you know what? I owe you a birthday celebration, but I love you too. Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. Now, what's that radio station? Lady B helps one, two people every day. Like, a contest winner might not have groceries. Little things, she's very sympathetic to life and human beings. So, 
because she's so sympathetic, I think it's so easy for her to just do for other people. Like, that's what she does on a daily basis. Like, more than, I see her do that more than I see her talk on the radio. Giving, I know I inherited that characteristic from her. My family affectionately and still refers to her as the Big E. My mother's name was Ethel, Allie Humphreys, and um, yeah, the Big E. Um, and I proudly accept it when my family teases me and calls me Little E, because those are some shoes that I would love to be able to grow and fill. I know I'm nowhere near there. There was a woman who was being beaten almost every day uh, who spoke with B and B took a personal interest in this lady. Uh, this lady was being beaten so bad where she couldn't sit down. And I remember a day speaking to B and she just cried. She said, Mr. Joe, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about how much toothpaste in my house. And this lady is worrying about when she's gonna get her next behind whooping. And from that day on, I knew B was, was a gift from God. My mom owned a bar in Southwest Philadelphia. My mother received love from both ends, from the lawyers and judges and doctors to the crackheads and the winos. Everybody loved my mom. She fed strangers. Um, we grew up in a house where if you ran away from home, you ran to my house. My mother took in every stray, every unwanted, everyone who felt unloved. Um, she was always there to reassure you that you were, that you were special. My fondest Lady B memory would have to be waiting, um, waiting for her radio show to come on, get my stuff together, get my tape, get my, my tape player. I didn't have like a boom box. I had the kind with the buttons at the bottom and, um, you know, just trying to, just trying to get that together. You know, waiting for that voice to come on. This is Lady B. And I was like, oh, I know she's about to play some hip hop for me. You know, it just felt like, I don't know, hip hop was just, I don't know, saving me. I don't know how to explain that. Just felt like the rapture. Wow, that is such a great feeling. Because it was the soundtrack to our lives. It was the soundtrack in the background of our childhood. What I try to represent is um, our past. I like to be a time machine, if you will, that takes our generation uh, for four hours out of the day and reminds them how much fun that we had listening to uh, R&B, funk, and hip hop. So I love what I'm doing now because I get to give you a little bit of all of it. Love is a house by the Force MDs. Every now and then you get a gem. Yeah, right. That's what I know. Wow. Who's upside your head on my Okay, shoulder, really? I was like, who's upside your head? Like, I'm ready to call him in and go, good job, Elmo. Is he in the studio? Yes, yeah, always. It's been 30 years. First of all, that doesn't even seem like a reality because it seems like yesterday. But yeah, 30 years ago, um, I did a hip hop record and convinced the radio to allow me to play a new genre of music that was unknown to everyone. 30 years down the line, I guess I can say that um, I'm proud that, uh, number one, of being a part of its foundation and the fact that it's here so strong now and um, that is generating the the dollars that is generating and that it's changing lives globally it's like watching something from your neighborhood evolve into something that touches a globe 30 years ago it's kind of amazing to me that you know she's been around that long and stays relevant and people love her so much today it's not some people had a big mark on your life and they and, and they affected you deeply and they had this great presence in your life and then they disappeared and you see them and you kind of remember for a second but you don't carry that love in the way that we carry our love for Lady B. Because her mark has been consistent. Her footprint in our lives has been long and, and deep. If you're in a business that long, you, you're doing something right and you have to have people, like I said, because everything's cutthroat nowadays, and even more so nowadays than it was back then. So, I mean, if she's doing what she's doing and been doing what she was doing, 
you know for a fact, excuse me, that this lady has something, has something very special that everybody don't have. You had an impact on my life. You know what I mean? I just want you to know that, you know, and I got, thank you. Don't get emotional. Thank you, lady. Thank you so much for believing in hip hop. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you. See, I got, I got, <laughs> now I got work to do. She got me on. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Lady B. Love you, girl, for real. Two, one, fifth. I'm only halfway there. I'm only halfway there. I want to do 30 more of this, of exactly what I'm doing right now. She is totally not expecting this. Okay. All right, so we'll do it right now. Hold on. So Come on, Dan. It's 107.9 WRNB. Okay, so we have to interrupt the program because I have a very important person on the phone. Hello, are you there? What's up, B? Are you there, very important person? Are you there? Listen, I'm, I'm here for you all the time. So in case you don't know who's on the telephone, this is Mr. Big Willie Smith himself. Hey, Will! <laughs> what's up, girl? I just wanted to call in and say what's happening. What's happening is 30 years on the radio and in the community. Do you believe it, Will? Mmm, I love that. So 30 years, damn. It's like I'm doing a call in for 30 years. I think I got to walk in the station for 30 years. Oh! I, can't, I can't call in for 30 years, baby. You are not standing For 30 here. years, for 30 years, you I got to walk into the here station. In front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Lady B, 30 years up in this piece. 30 years, 30 years, up, in this piece. 30 years up in this piece. That's how she do it. Yeah, Lady B. 30 years up in this piece, wow. um, you know. I'm gonna cry. I was, I was, uh, I was all over Lady B. Aww. But she liked Jazzy Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop saying I'm that? I'm just saying, you know, I was young. I was younger than him, so you wouldn't, you know. You went with the mature, you know? You're still just as cute, <laughs> No, it's, it, w it wouldn't be no Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince if it, if it wasn't for Lady B, you know. It's, uh, there was a time when uh, rap couldn't even get on the radio. You know, jokers wouldn't even put it on the radio, wouldn't let people, uh, wouldn't let rappers come on and all of that. And uh, Lady B was uh, one of the pioneers fighting for hip hop and more than fighting for hip hop, fighting for young people to be able to have a voice. Yes, because that's what it was about. Yeah, you know, what I mean? you know. We needed to be heard. We had things to say, Will. And that's real. You know, so, you know, I'm just uh, happy to be here and to... Uh, support you and to acknowledge you and to, to love you up and I let everybody you, know 30 Bye. years of Lady B wouldn't be no me if it wasn't no B. Oh, I love you, Big <laughs> Willie. Ah! 30 years ago, he was a lot skinnier and he had a really cute high top. Baby. He was adorable. He was. And he still is. I love right. you, Will. Number love, baby. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Lady God. B, baby. Lady B. 30 years, Big <laughs> Willie.